figured I'd record this because I can't exactly explain this effect. I have my receiver coil right here being very heavily earth grounded through like four different points. Earth grounded there. It's earth grounded into the DC power supply. And it's earth grounded here. So it's at three points where it's earth grounded. Now I'm gonna read the current that flows through this motor. So I'm getting three times the output power from this heavily earth grounded receiver coil. And um, watch what happens. This meter will read the current flowing through the motor and it will start to spin. And that DC supply is what's running the transmitter. Transmitter is consuming a little under 17 watts, a little under a quarter of an amp, 72 volts. And check this out. So the motor is consuming. The motor is consuming half an amp. The motor is consuming half an amp. And as it consumes half an amp, the input wattage that the transmitter is consuming drops, as you can see that. And also, I have wireless lights that kick on in that little bucket. I'm not sure if you can see that. I have a little bucket right there with wireless lights stored in it, and they kick on when I do this. I'll try and get this all in frame. Like, I hope you can see that, like, flashing. My wireless power effects increase, and my input wattage drop the heavier I ground the system. Just thought I'd show that. So the motor is spinning. You can see it's spinning. He's consuming half an amp to spin. How is the motor consuming half an amp when we're not even when our transmitter isn't putting in half an amp to run itself? We're getting an excess amount of power from the ground, like we're sucking it in. So now I'll give you a power reading on. Gotta find my correct leads here. So I combine the output of the uh, receiver coil with a bridge rectifier that's also extracting power from the ground. So here's my combined output. I have almost two amps there. It's almost two amps. And I could just keep duplicating this circuitry and get all the power I want. And notice when it's shorted out, the wireless power effects have become much more pronounced. Like even the little mini receivers all over my room are lighting up. Like even that one at very far distance is lit. And if you think I'm cheating or if I have a different system powering this, I'll shut it off and all effects will cease. That thing is off down there now, too. So that's an interesting effect I wanted to film and show. I'll turn it back on. And boom, we're back on. So keep in mind, all that's occurring. We're, short we're dead shorting out the receiver coil. And we have almost two amps dead shorted. And we still have extraordinary wireless power. How is this even possible? The range seems slightly less, the range seems a little bit more reduced, but still, it's impressive that we have all these effects still occurring. Now I'll shut the system off, so you see, 
We have two amps from our receiver coil under dead short. Two amps. And people will go, well, what's your voltage? The voltage is around 50 volts. Open circuit, 53 volts. So receiver is putting out 53 volts at a little under 2 amps. And that's why I could run the motor. And I could probably get even more if I had even more exotic diodes. It's the diodes themselves that play a huge role in getting all your extracted power. Uh, metal insulator, metal Scotty diodes that have some type of quantum effect to them seem to play a huge role in getting ex a lot of excess power out of the system when you add earth ground to it. Seems to be called a quantum point contact metal insulator metal diode. I don't know, long name. And I will explain how, now that the system is off, sometimes these LED lights, these LEDs will light up because these are super sensitive LED receiver lights. And they're just made with two RF diodes, 1N4148 RF edition, or BAT41. And it's just two LEDs, upside down, pigtail tied, which this would be the ground part right here. And the it converts the uh, wireless alternating signal into DC that runs the light wirelessly. So, and sometimes this lights up. Because these are the most efficient diodes you can buy. And sometimes it lights up with no input. And you connect this to a large plane of metal. I have earlier videos demonstrating this. This right here now is true free energy. It almost kind of flickers. It's like the power comes in and surges. This right here in the palm of my hand is a true radiant energy receiver. It'll even light up on weird stuff too. Like there's no form of electricity or wiring behind my wall in this side of my room. And watch this. Just touching it to a, a large metal object. It dimly lights. And pulses. And I, I had a video where I tested this on a receiver coil. And I was out in the middle of my yard at night and it was lighting up. So... even touch it the top of this coil here yeah, it still lights up and pulses but yeah I had people thinking I was faking stuff it's I mean you could probably think that but it's only due to the fact I have the most efficient components that you can possibly buy um, nothing's faked in any way I dedicate years of my life and research to this it's just I have the most efficient components you can currently get on the market. And remarkable effects occur with them. Look, I even touched this to my metal measuring tape. How weird is that? Not sure if that's showing. How weird is that? This thing is completely portable, lifts up and moves. I'll even go in my dark bathroom with this thing. Okay, it doesn't light up on that. Maybe my heater. Nope. Bathroom's a dead zone, apparently. So too bright in here. No, I think it's too bright in here. Large metal box. Hmm. Nothing. There's some dark in here. Hmm. 
Nothing. Certain types of metal that have the effect occur on it. I know it works in the kitchen too. Works here on the ground outlet. Nothing. Mm, nothing. Very dim here. There was a hot spot in this area for some reason. Lights up here. It loves metal thermoses. So it's the type of metal. It's acting as an antenna. As you can see that. Some type of resonance chamber effect. Oh, and I can't touch the metal or I ground out the effect. Interesting, huh? Test this over here. Dimly lights. Very dim. See that? Very dim. Bring this in my bathroom. It's the type of metal that causes these effects to occur. Uh, nothing. Likes to occur near a window too, I noticed. So we'll put this near my window. And it lights very dim. Near my window. And this also works outside in the middle of my farm field too, which I've shown in one of my older videos with a coil. I'm going to have to make a special array of these to act as antennas. Make a special receiving array of these and see how much power I can truly extract with just this method. This method would be true energy extraction. And you see it's just, it's literally letting up from just a metal thermos. And there's probably a more perfect metal that's optimal for this effect. I'll even bring it down here. Really dark over here. Mm. Don't think that's lighting. No. Not light. Oh, very, very dim. I'm also touching part of it. It's hard to do this. A few hot spots with it. Okay. I'm just sitting up on the table. Mm, nothing. So that about shows everything I wanted to show. Um, video's already going on too long, being too long. But yeah, thanks to all those who support my work and help me um, before I end this I will show you the true potentials of this system look how far I got I can get the uh, fluorescent tube lit now look, look at the potentials of this of this thing is it not getting mind bending yet I'm like almost four feet away and it's lit and keep in mind I'm doing this why we're getting 52 volts out of our uh, receiver coil. And I bet you I can still do this when it's shorted. Yeah, 1.9 amps, dead short from my receiver. And I have even better wireless power? How is that possible? Seems to be more intense and a bit of a smaller field. Like it falls off a lot more sharply. 
but it's more intense in that field. It's very interesting. But yeah. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment. And if you want to donate this work, feel free to contact me in my email. You can donate me components. You can donate money to help fund this research. I'm partnered with other organizations uh, online based that proved you can absolutely use this type of technology to power anything indefinitely in self-sustaining energy systems. And there's nothing that violates the laws of physics or breaks the rules of thermodynamics in it because your frequencies are sucking power from the earth at a high frequency harmonic of the Schumann earth resonances. And I explained that in older videos. So yeah, thanks again to everyone and feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and donate.